everyone and welcome to Blues Fans TV. I hope you all had a wonderful winter break. Obviously the players did, I'm not really so sure about us because it's been freezing whilst they all got to go on holday. But oh, there is a little... Cold. Pardon? All I got was a cold. Yeah, same here. We've, I think we've all got permanent colds at the moment. Um, bit of a shame, but anyway, uh, the football is back as of next week. We have a huge game against United on Monday. But with that said, uh, there has been a little bit of news going around during the winter break. So before we get into all those previews, uh, I think it's, it's only fair that we, we discuss what's been happening whilst the players have been away. Um, some interesting stuff here going on. Mainly, I think we're going to well, we're going to start with Jorginho. Uh, his agent has come out with a quote more or less saying that he may not stay at Chelsea when the summer when summertime transfer comes along. Um, what's he said? Say, say the, whole, the whole quote. Right, the direct quote I've got here on my phone, it says, anything could happen in the transfer market. So why not to Juventus? The, pri the priority is clearly to remain, but we could also evaluate leaving Chelsea in July. We would consider proposals that will arrive from Italy, France and England, and this was Jorginho's agent. So it's a bit weird. Uh, I mean, I, I've got no reason to believe that Jorginho isn't happy at Chelsea uh, but I think with foreign players they do think and especially ones that haven't been at a Premier League club for a long amount of time I do think that they are prone to going elsewhere if the money's there if they're you know if they're going to get a better deal out of it if they're playing in a club where maybe the football's a bit easier the league's a bit easier um, obviously not all players want to do that um, and we're, we're very lucky there's I think it's a little bit of a recurring trend. Like Italian players come to Chelsea and they feel a bit homesick. Because this was the same thing that with Sarri last season. Same thing, even if you want to go further back, Hernan Crespo, he never really settled down at Chelsea either in his time here. And I don't want to go too much into it because it is just a rumour. And to be honest, it could be just Jorginho's agent trying to drum up a little bit of interest for him. And. Jorginho's influence on this team can't be underestimated. He's had such a brilliant season for us. If you want to use a perfect game to describe his influence, look at Arsenal away. Look how clueless we were on the pitch until we brought Jorginho in 30 minutes. And the impact that he had on the entire team. Our passing, for example, stepped up about five different levels once he brought him on. Obviously, he got the equaliser. It's question marks whether he should have been on the pitch or not. But Jorginho's influence is there to see, and we've seen it throughout this season. Now, I don't think we should get rid of Jorginho because I think he's one of, the, one of the key players of our team. If I want to play devil's advocate, the only reason why I'd say maybe it could be a right time to get rid of him is that he's turning 29 in December. It could be a good time to cash in on him right now. But I still think his influence on the team can't be unmatched. When we don't have Jorginho on the pitch, we move the ball a lot slower. And to be honest, we move the ball with a lot less quality. So... There's pros and cons to take of it, but I'd still rather keep Jorginho. Yeah, I think I would as well. I think he's been one of our best players this season. I didn't have a very good season last season. I think everybody was um, a little bit annoyed with him. Um, but he really turned the fans around, and I think to lose him in the state that we're in wouldn't be... And it wouldn't be an upside to it, really. And not at this point. Maybe in a couple of years' time. Obviously, obviously as you said, he is getting older. And we know the, play, the, the club's policy on players over 30. Uh, but for now, I would say it's a little bit too premature. So I hope that doesn't come of anything. I hope it's just a bit of speculation. Um, and, and there's nothing too, too serious in that. Next piece of news on our weekly transfer roundup is concerning Jeremy Boga. Now, Jeremy Boga, we all know the name. He was another youth player on our books who we may have got rid of a little bit too early didn't really have much of a chance or much opportunity at Chelsea only real opportunity he had was first game of the season against Burnley when we came back as Premier League champions and he didn't get a lot of game time I think if I remember correctly Cahill got a red card early into the game and Conte subbed him off because he wanted to bring on another defender into the game we sold him off to Sassuolo in 2008 for 3.5 million and this season he's really started to settle down in Serie A he's got seven goals and two assists to his name so far and the Sassula owner has admitted in, over the last couple of days that we have a buyback clause on him. Now, a lot of fans are excited about him. I'm hearing a lot of talk about a potential reunion between the player and the club. And just looking at the guy's stats, his ball progression stats are amazing. Granted, his decision making does need to improve a little bit, but he's a young player as well and it's going to improve with time. He's finally started to settle down at Sassuolo. Like I said, seven goals and two assists to his name. And he's a key player in their starting lineup now. And... I'm not going to lie, I want him back, especially when it, comes to, and when it comes down to the winger situation anyway. Fact is, we have the two oldest wingers in the league and they both need replacing in the summer. Pedro, in my opinion, looks like he's going anyway. He's had barely any game time this season. It looks like the same case as Olivier Giroud. And when you look at his numbers compared to the other wingers that we have on our team, he's already got more goals than all of our wingers plus Mason Mount. Mason Mount and hudson Adoy, to, to be fair as well, have more assists than him. But like I was saying, decision-making in the final third 
does need to improve, but he has got that impact in him and he knows where the goal is. And the one thing we need is that we need wingers who know where the goal is. We We've been goals. too... Exactly. We need, We've we been need, way we too predictable. <laughs> Your thoughts? Um, I'm happy for anybody to come who's scoring goals who's creating assists I think Mason does offer a lot more than just I think his all round play is very good and I think he's going to be somebody that's hard to compete with uh, and obviously different leagues I mean I'm always cautious when players come to the Premier League especially when you're playing for Chelsea there's such so much pressure on you to do well straight away um, although I think Frank has, has lowered that a little bit lowered that expectation a little bit so uh, yeah I'm 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 from what I've seen, from the goal you just showed me, I'm happy because I didn't know much about him until Lewis educated me. But I think Frank will be looking for reinforcements to add a bit more like depth into the team, to add a like some bit, bit more creativity because we sometimes we just lack it. We we're a bit we have predictable. we're a bit predictable. We can we can get the ball to the final third and then we just don't really produce anything else. So he will be looking for for players, not just forwards, but all round players that can put the ball in the back of the net too. So that's so that's a very important thing. Right, well, guys, we'll move on to our next point, but let us know down in the comments section below. Do you guys want to see Jeremy Boga back at Chelsea? Let us know. So last but not least, we're going to talk about Sheffield United, which is something I thought I'd never have to say. Um, I had them tipped to be one of the worst teams in the league this season. I don't know why. I just didn't really see them going very far. Uh, it is their first time back up in the Premier League since I don't know how long. They are only two points behind us. It is getting quite serious. And that for me is just because we're... I think we've allowed that to happen because we've dropped so many points in meaningless games that we should have got the result. Um, and, and a lot of that, and mainly let's put into like for perspective for Newcastle, for instance, how many chances did we have? We could have we could have easily got a goal there and we, we waited till the last how minute. How are we going to say the same story for? Yeah, exactly, which is, which is the problem. So we need to be putting the ball in the back of the net. And if we don't, that is when teams like Sheffield United are going to catch us up. Um, so I am a little bit worried about it. Obviously, having United as our first game back is is a, a huge test to our performance all round. I think we need to do well. Um, and we need to get back into the swing of things. I think the players have already gone back into training, so they only had really a week off uh, instead of you know the full two weeks, which is good. So... Um, something to be worried about but if we can improve our form after this break hopefully the play and what I'm hoping is the players have had a nice rest relaxed gone out with their mates got drunk <laughs> and now they're ready to get back on it here's the thing I've said it for months I I can't explain this Chelsea side there's been brilliant performances in games yeah. where I expect us to get rolled over and against teams that we should have been rolling over we've played absolutely poorly and I think both of them's come back to haunt us now one thing I will also say this is probably the worst Premier League season in terms of quality that has been for years. And I think it's it's proven by the fact that we've got clubs like Wolves, Newcastle, uh, Sheffield United as well. Credit to them because they've had amazing seasons. I'm not trying to say it's because we've been bad, but it is one of the reasons why. The top six has dropped down. There's a huge gulf, of, gulf in quality between Liverpool, Manchester City and the rest. And we've seen that for the last couple of seasons. Our problem has been consistency. If we had won the games that we should have won as well as the results that we would have had top four would be ours already hell we'd probably be in third maybe even second before we lost to Newcastle if we had beaten Bournemouth West Ham and who else Southampton at home we would have been second already yeah. and looking at us now even after the Arsenal result as well Leicester result was kind of fair evens but we top four there's been a. I, don't I mean, I agree with you because I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's been. I don't think we've had in terms of quality. We've had the worst season. season. I have to. I have to disagree with you there because I think there have been some games where we have looked better than any That's of the, any of when Sari did. Yeah, team. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. So I think it's just a waiting game, really, and I really do think we need to see how this winter break's played out and if it's worked because obviously this is the first winter break players have ever had. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's either going to go one way or the other. They're either going to be out of practice or it's going to be the nice, rela like relaxing please, rest they needed. Please, uh, please be please the latter be because yeah. the next. Three games are make or break. And here's the thing we put on ourselves. The thing about. We're already in February. Here's the thing first half of the season, top four was look like it weren't in doubt. And we looked like Lampard was performing a madness even without the transfer ban. And the beauty of that was because of the transfer ban, our expectations had lowered a bit. But because the transfer ban got lifted in January and we've done nothing with it, I feel like the pressure's been put back onto the team and back onto players because like top four's now in our hands and it's been in our hands for months. Let's not fumble the bag now, because we had it in our hands. We could have improved in this. We could have built on our team in January. We didn't do anything. Now we've got to see what we could do. Now, the players had done it over the first half of the season, so I'm not saying I don't believe in this Chelsea squad, but I'm saying we could have still built on this team, and there's obvious areas that we needed to improve on. Let's see how far we take it into the summer. I'm still confident in this Chelsea side, but it's a bit stressful. 
Yeah, I think uh, we didn't really make any signs of giant transfer window looking back at now because if they couldn't get the players they want, they didn't want to make panic buys and waste money. So I do expect in the summer it will be a completely different situation. Uh, but we can only hope that Frank gets the best out of the team because obviously at the start of the season, if you said top four, we would have said, no, nah, it doesn't matter. But because we've, we've performed so well in some games, I think fans are now going to be quite disappointed if we don't make it. So comment below, let us know your thoughts. Do you think we'll still reach top four this season? And uh, what do you think of the Jorginho news? Uh, do you think Jeremy Roger would be an asset to our team? Comment below and please click the subscribe button. And don't forget to subscribe to the One Football app.